2.5 parallelograms. How would you know that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram? Well, if you had a quadrilateral, that's a four-sided figure. Let's just draw a random one. The way that you would know that it was a parallelogram is if it had two sets of opposite sides that are parallel. So that would mean that BC is parallel to AD and AB is parallel to CD. Two sets of parallels. And if you know a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, what else do you know? So, so much. So if we draw another parallelogram, make it a parallelogram first. So if you know that this is a parallelogram, there are many, many things that you know. First thing that you know is that opposite angles are congruent. Also, you know that these two angles are supplementary. Also, you know that if you draw on the diagonals, the diagonals are um, not the same length, but at this middle point, they bisect each other. So this long length is the same length as this long length. And this sh shorter length is the same length as this shorter length. The final thing that you would know is that the side lengths are also congruent. That one's a, a pretty obvious one, but you still technically need to mark it. So if we've used two tick marks here, technically three here and three here. I know that's getting a little bit small. And technically four here. I should have left myself room. And four here so that those two side links are congruent. So much, much, much information you know about angles, you know about diagonals, you know about side links, and you also know about their um, uh, parallelogram nature and that they're supplementary angles. So let's take a look at this example. It says find the value of each variable x, that's a side length, bc, I want to know about this angle A in the corner here, and I would like to know about this angle B in the corner here. So we're going to get two angles and a side length. And what they're saying is that A, B, C, D, so that's this guy, this, this guy, A, B, C, D, and A, F, E, D, A, F, E, D, are parallelograms. So they're telling you that it's a parallelogram, which means it comes with all this information. Even if it's not labeled on the diagram, you still know all of this information. So if this is 14, a length of 14, then AD is also 14. And if AD is 14, then BC is also 14. So the side length BC is the length of 14. Then we want to find the measure of angle A. So if this measure is 50, I know that the total sum of this corner angle is going to be supplementary. So 180 minus 50 is 130. And if this length, or if the, I'm sorry, not this length, but this angle measure is 100, that means that angle A will be 30 degrees. And then if this is 30 degrees, we want to find the measure of angle B. We would do 180 minus 30 and we would see that that is 150. So angle B is 150. So using supplementary angles, you can get those, those corner angles. Find the value of X if A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. Again, they're telling you in the directions it's a parallelogram, so it comes with lots and lots of information. So they're saying that A, C, this whole diagonal, is 4x and mc so just from this middle point to c is x squared minus 15. well if this is a parallelogram then mc is congruent to ma so that means that ma is also x squared minus 15. so now we can set an equation up x squared minus 15 plus x squared minus 15 equals the whole length of 4x. 
This is a quadratic because the x's are squared, so we're going to try and factor. That's the ultimate goal here. So first, we need to get it equal to zero. So we're gonna combine like terms, 2x squared, and then we can combine our, um, our x over onto the other side, so subtract 4x, and then negative 15 and negative 15 makes negative 30 equals zero. I also noticed that each of these terms divides by two, so let's divide by two to make our lives easier. x squared minus 2x minus 15 equals zero. A times C is negative 15. And the two factors that multiply to negative 15 but add to negative 2 are going to be a, th um, a 3 and negative 5. So then we've got x plus 3, x minus 5 equals 0. So then our two solutions are negative 3 and positive 5. But you always want to check when it's in terms of a context that has length because you're not always sure if either one of these are going to create positive lengths. So the best way to check it is to plug it back into one of the lengths and see if it makes sense. Four times negative three is negative 12. Does that make sense for the length of AC? No, that does not make sense. But does five make sense? Four times five is 20. So yes, x equals five is the true solution. Let's take a look at another uh, parallel again, parallelogram example. Use the diagram and the given information to solve for a, b, x, and y. A, b, x, and y are all in here. So x, y, a, b. Um, what you can notice is that the top half of the information here is side lengths. And then this bottom half of information are angles. So just kind of separating our information here, we can see that we've got some sides and some angles. And you can also see that the uh, variables are grouped together. So the X's and the Y's are grouped with sides and the A's and the B's are grouped with angles. So let's label the diagram. Um, it says that NP, um, also, what do you know about this diagram? I know that this diagram is a parallelogram. I know it's a parallelogram because it's got two pairs of opposites, opposite sides that are parallel by the uh, arrows on the diagram. So NP is AX plus 5Y. MN is 5X plus 15Y. MQ is 25. And PQ is 18. And what you want to know is that you want to work with sides before you work with your angles. So work with one piece at a time. So let's set up a system of equations to solve this. I know it's a system of equations because my X's and my Y's are together in my expressions. And if I have two variables, then I need to be able to set up two equations. So let's set up the first one. What I know about a parallelogram is that opposite sides are congruent. So 8x plus 5y equals 25. I also know that these two side lengths are congruent. So 5x plus 15y equals 18. And now I've got a system of equations to solve. It's set up for elimination, but nothing eliminates right now. 8 plus 5 doesn't go to 0. 5 plus 15 doesn't go to 0. So we need to fix this so that we have a 0 pair. Um, 5 and 15 seem more friendly because 5 is a factor of 15. So I would like to turn this 5 into a 15, but not just a regular 15. It would be better if it turned into a negative 15. So 5 times negative 3 makes negative 15. So then negative 3 times 8 gives us negative 24x minus 15y. And then negative 3 times 25 is negative 75. And now we can add these equations together. The negative 15 and the positive 15 cancel. 5 uh, plus negative 24 is negative 19x 
18 minus 75 is negative 57. Divide by negative 19 and x equals 3. So we've got one of the variables, we've got x. So now all we need to do is plug this x into one of these expressions to get the value of y. Whichever one looks more friendly to you, I'm just gonna choose this one. Eight times three plus five y equals 25. 24 plus five y equals 25. Five y equals one. And so y equals one fifth x equals 3, y equals 1 fifth. Now pause this video and try to set up your system for your angles. Angle M is A plus 5B. Angle N is 13B minus 19A. Measure of angle Q is 142. And then we can also calculate what the measure of angle P is by 180 minus 142, which is going to get the measure of 38 degrees. So now our system is A plus 5B equals 38 and 13, but we can rewrite it in the other order. So negative 19A plus 13B equals 142. Pause this video try on solving this system of equations. I'm gonna give you solutions to save time. You should get B equal to eight and A equal to negative two. All right, let's do a small review of systems of equation. There's two different options when you're solving a system using substitution or elimination. I would say that most of the time you're gonna to lean towards elimination. This equation right here is not set up for elimination right now because the X and the Y are not on the same side of the second equation. They are on the same side as the first, but not on the second. So let's do elimination first. So we've got 2X minus 6Y equals 5. And then to fix this, I'm going to pull the 4Y to the left and the 1 to the right. Uh, hopefully you can do that in your head. If not, you can write it out, but it's going to be X minus 4y, because I move the 4y over, equals a positive 1, because the 1 is going to the right. Now I want these to eliminate, so then I want these 2s to eliminate, because 6 and 4 is too big for 24. So let's do negative 2. So let me get negative 2x plus 8y equals negative 2. And then I'm adding these top two equations here. So the two X's cancel, six X plus eight Y is two Y. And then five take away two is three. Divide by two, so Y equals three halves or 1.5, whichever you prefer. And then you plug it back in to get your X value. So we're going to use either one. I'll just use the top one, two X minus six times three halves equals five. 2x, 6 times 3 is 18, 18 divided by 2 is 9, and then 2x equals 14, and x equals 7. So that's the one we've been using the most, but I do want to show you a second, a second method, which is called substitution. You need to have one of the variables isolated, one of them alone. So on this one, the x and the y are on the same side, so I don't think I'm going to mess with that top equation. But this bottom, bottom equation, the x, is almost alone. It's almost alone, but it is attached to a negative 1. So if we add 1 to the other side, we can have x equals 4y plus 1. And now this expression gets substituted in for x in your first equation. So 2 times x, but it's not x anymore. It's 4y plus 1 minus 6y equals 5. And now we can, sub, we can distribute and solve 2 times 4y is 8y plus 2 times 1 is 2, minus 6y equals 5. 8 minus 6 is 2y plus 2 equals 5. 2y equals 3, 
and y equals three halves. Oh good, we got the same thing. And now we just plug this y value back into our solved equation, x equals four times three halves plus one. Four times three is 12, 12 divided by two is six. So x equals seven. Thank you.